Hey guys, so in this very short Envision Studio animation tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a very cool character carousel using parallax scrolling. This is gonna look super cool in your portfolio and it's gonna amaze everybody who's gonna be watching it. Cause I've noticed that when it comes to portfolios, all the people seeing them, and especially the clients, they're just addicted to animations. So having a nice high fidelity animation like this in your portfolio can be you know, the way to actually land that awesome job or that great client. But instead of using the Witcher characters, we're gonna use dummy characters that you can actually replace with characters from your favorite TV show or from your favorite video game. So you can actually make this completely your own. So let's begin. I'm gonna start by creating an iPhone screen and then filling it with black. So it's gonna be a lot easier to see our characters. And if you want to start doing this in high fidelity, you need to find your characters and then cut them out from the background. But it takes a lot of time, so instead I'm just gonna create some simple dummy characters to just show you how this animation works. And then you can replace them with those high fidelity ones. So by creating two ovals and modifying the bottom one, I'm creating a character shape. And it's not supposed to be beautiful, don't worry, you can replace it with something pretty later, but it's supposed to show you how this entire animation works. And just so we can differentiate the characters, I'm gonna duplicate this character and then create a couple of different color versions. So there's gonna be a red version, a pink version, a purple version, and a blue version. And make sure to group each character to make this easier. Okay, now it's time to place the characters in the carousel. So one is gonna be in the center, one on the left, one on the right, and the last one is gonna be completely behind the screen. But if you take the character and start dragging it outside of the screen, Envision Studio is gonna place it outside of the artboard, and that's not really what we want, so let's bring it back. Okay, just make sure the size of your characters doesn't have any decimal points, so like in my case it's 295 point something, I'm just gonna replace that with 295 for every character. That's gonna make it a lot easier for you when trying to find how much smaller the characters need to get on the sides of the carousel. Alright, so the character in the center should be the biggest because it's the closest to us. So now let's modify the characters on the sides. Let's make them 250, but make sure to actually lock the proportions. Now line the character to the bottom and do the exact same thing with the other one. Okay, now the blue character is even further away from us, so we need to make it smaller. But once again, make sure the proportions are set and I'm gonna make this 220. Now place it on the side of the artboard and then use your arrow cursors to move it outside. That way it won't appear on the side of the artboard, you're just gonna see the bounding box there. That's fine. To make the characters blend with the background a little bit, I'm gonna create an overlay that's in front of them and I'm gonna fill it with a fading black gradient. So it's gonna have black on both ends, but one of them is gonna be completely transparent. And you can play around with that overlay to actually match what you're aiming for, so it can cover more of the characters or less of them, it's all up to you. Now using the rectangle tool, I'm gonna create a rectangle that's gonna be behind everything and I'm gonna fill it with a gradient that starts with a dark blue at the top and ends with black at the bottom. Now to make the parallax effect actually work, you need a couple of layers in the background that's gonna be moving independently from one another. So let's use the path tool and create some kind of janky looking mountains in the back. Just make sure that they are a little bit wider than our screen and that they are behind the characters on the layer palette. And once again, we're using those ugly low fidelity elements just so you can learn the pattern to actually making this animation work and then you can replace it with beautiful mountains. Now it's time for our second layer of mountains that's gonna be closer to the characters. And once we have all the objects in place and before we start actually animating, it's really important that you can name your character groups. So I'm just gonna name them character one, two, three, and four. That's gonna make it a lot easier if you have a lot more screens and you animate between them to actually understand which group is which character. Okay, I renamed the first artboard to 1, so it's gonna be easier to know that's the starting point, and then I duplicate it, and on that second screen I start moving the characters into their new positions. But at the same time, if the character was in the center and was 295 in height, I'm then gonna decrease the height to 250, of course locking it, and then move it to the side. Now the pink character is gonna be in the middle now, so I'm gonna move it to the middle and also increase the height of it to 295. Then grab it, move it up, and then find character 4 on the layer panel, and then use the arrows to actually move it into place. And then of course increase the size of it to 250, and move it up. 
Now the trick with parallax is that the objects closer to you move a lot faster than the objects far away from you. So move the first layer just a little bit to the left and then move the layer behind it even less. And of course you can tweak it to your liking at any point after testing the animation. As it's gonna be a portfolio style carousel, it's better to have an interaction that happens automatically instead of by clicking an arrow or something. So let's add an interaction to screen number one, choose it as the timer and then choose the preset to motion and navigate to screen number two. And then set it to about three seconds so you can actually see the animation well. Now select the second artboard and do the exact same thing, but this time point it to screen number one. And also it's gonna be a timer based motion with three seconds duration. Now click on the play button to preview your animation. And if you want, you can add more characters and switch between more screens than just two. That way you just have screen one go to screen number two, screen two go to screen number three, and then screen number three go back to number two, and number two goes back to number one. It's pretty simple really. But just for fun, let's paste in some of the Witcher backgrounds that we did, the high fidelity ones, just so you can see how it actually can transform the entire experience. So let's paste the same images onto the same artboards, but make sure that they are at the same position. So I'm going to modify the Y value of the background to be zero in both cases. Now, here we have the general background layer with the sky and the mountains, and we have some smoke layer just behind the characters. So let's move the mountains just a little bit and move the smoke a little bit more. And now when we preview the animation, we can see that all the planes are moving independently and it looks quite cool. So now if you imagine that you have quite different characters in there, it's gonna be super polished. And making it look more natural is all about making sure that the layers don't move too much or too little. So like in this case, I'm just gonna replace some of the values a little bit and make them move a little bit slower. And as you can see, the animation now looks a lot better. And that's it. Now you can add some titles, some character names, and place some different characters in a different background. It can be a city, a forest, anything you like, as long as it can have a couple of layers. And I'm gonna share the source file for this exercise on our community on Slack. If you're not there yet, you can join by sending us an email. And we're using Envision Studio because it's both free to use and very simple to learn. And it uses the same principles that other tools that allow you to animate. So you can actually start from learning in Vision Studio and then you can move to any tool that you'd like that's timeline based or state based like this one. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments what other animation tutorials would you like to see. There is also a chapter on the animation basics in the book, so if you don't have it, check it out.